So um, in retraining your metabolism, how many of you eat three times a day here? About three? Any of you eat four times? Five? Five? Oh, good, good. Okay, so a lot of frequent meal, meal eaters, that's perfect. Um, and what happens is if you are hungry, rather than adding more calories to each meal, it's better just to add an extra meal, get another meal in there, like every three hours. And that way you're keeping your blood sugar level. If you're eating a meal, say you normally eat 300 calories a meal, and you up it to 500, you may not need all those calories all at one time, and then it, it might be stored as fat. And that's why that's important. You never want to be down here. Even if you just eat 100 calories of something healthy, just to avoid your blood sugar from dipping down, that's how you really sustain your muscle. So we want to eat the um, right balance of foods. How many of you eat breakfast? Good. A lot of healthy people. That's good, good. Uh, and then we can incorporate resistance training. That's what builds the muscles. And then eating enough calories at every meal, too. So do most of you keep your calories fairly, fairly consistent throughout the day? Especially a lot of you have like four or five meals? OK. So you're ahead of most people. Definitely ahead of most people. So we want to build your meal to build your metabolism. That means the right balance of everything. So in every meal, you know, we're talking about 20% protein, 60% complex carbs, and 20% healthy fats in every single meal. So for example, if you have, um, just in terms of blood sugar and also food satiety, like how long you're going to stay feeling full, if you have just an apple, if you think about it, you have a piece of fruit, I'm hungry, you go to the kitchen, you get an apple. Probably an hour later, you're hungry again. And that's because it's only carbohydrate. It's a great carbohydrate, but your body metabolizes it so quickly that the way to slow down the metabolism of that is add the, um, the protein and healthy fat. So instead of just an apple, maybe you have a non-fat Greek yogurt with it. And maybe you have 10 almonds with it. So you're getting your healthy fat, you're getting um, your, your proteins, and you're getting your carbohydrate in the apple. And that's a nice little meal. Okay, so if you do that, you will stay full for much, much longer, um, at least three, three and a half hours if you're eating properly versus maybe an hour if you're not. Your mood's going to improve. Um, and then what's so important, again, is it keeps your blood sugar regulated, so you're going to be building muscle and maintaining it. Here are some, uh, I thought this might be of interest to you, some high quality protein options. Um, do we have any vegans here? None? Okay, we're all carnivores, all right, as, as am I. Uh, so beans and rice have all the essential amino acids. So say you didn't have access to chicken or you know, some form of protein, if you combine beans and rice, that is, it's like the perfect protein. It's all the essential amino acids. So that is equivalent to eating a chicken breast or something like that in terms of its, uh, its protein content. Quinoa that we talked about, that's six grams of protein per serving. Not super high, uh, but if you compare it, um, whey protein, like, like a scoop of like they have here, they have uh, all kinds of really good quality whey proteins, usually is about 18 grams. 28 grams for egg whites, and you know an egg white is only 17 calories? You could easily eat eight egg whites for 100 calories and get 28 grams of protein, okay? And about, that's about the amount that we need in the morning with breakfast. We have gone all night long without having protein. So really to sustain our muscles, we want to make sure that we get that in the morning. That's probably about a third, a quarter to a third of what we might need. Uh, Jason here probably needs five times that, bigger guy, right? How much protein do you get every day? Do you know? Uh, I just do about two shakes a day. Two shakes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's about 60 grams probably. Um, I also have a, an oatmeal product. I don't really want to get too far into that, but that's 29 grams of protein. If you have protein with, with oats, you have ground turkey, pork tenderloin's good, and your fish. And they, look at this, plain yogurt, 20 grams, like the Faye Greek yogurt. Very, very high protein, so that's also an excellent alternative. Um, so do any of you, are any of you out and about and then you wonder, you know, gee, I, I need some breakfast or I need some snacks for my kids. What should I get? Where should I go? Um, oftentimes I'll just go for, even stop at the grocery store and get a yogurt and some fruit or something because it's a much better, healthier option than, than some of the other things that are out there. 
Okay, fitness. Uh, weight bearing activities. A lot of you do some weight training. Do you belong to gyms, some of you? Yeah. The other thing that resistance training does that's really important, especially um, as we age, is it, it builds your bone mass. So it makes your bones much stronger. Um, um, stages of training. If you go to the gym, they usually don't tell you about balance and stability because it doesn't really feel like you're working out that much. Is that right? But balance and stability is very, very important. Um, there are some exercises that you can do, just toe touches where you balance on one leg and touch one toe that works your core. And it doesn't feel, it doesn't look hard, um, but it is. All the way through strength training, hypertrophy and power. Hypertrophy is where you're building muscle. So if you're working with somebody, uh, you know, you want to start in this order. You don't start working out crazy with weights because you need a strong core, a strong foundation first. It would kind of be like building uh, you know, a cement castle on sand. You don't add muscle to a structure that's not strong yet. So that's why that's important to do that. Um, Brandon, do you do um, balance training for your sports? You do baseball and what else? Football, yeah. So did you start here? Do they incorporate that? And then they build you up you know, because they want you to get to the power phase. So how many, you all watching the Olympics? The, the uh, Olympics is pretty amazing. Have you seen the, uh, the hurdlers, the female hurdle track and field? They are powerful and they are powerful because they have a lot of muscle. They are, you know, it's power, it's not endurance. If you look at, um, if you look at athletes and their frames are very much not for aesthetics, they're beautiful of course, but they're really built for performance. And if you look at, say for example, a long distance runner, they're very, very tall and lean, and it's because they are constantly running. They're, they're actually burning their muscles out. They, if you go long, long distances and you're at a very high heart rate, you're not going to build muscle. You're going to be designed to be doing something else versus people who are doing power. You have a lot of muscle. It's short bursts of energy. It's, it's not endurance. It's very short, and th those people actually build a lot of muscle. They keep the muscle, and they need that for that particular type of activity. Now for the everyday person, we're not that person. You know, we are not, we're not in the Olympics. It'd be nice to dream about it. Um, but you know, really we want to be a strong core, nice and stable and strong, uh, so we don't slip and fall. Usually what happens as we get, get older, there are a lot of people who actually fall and break their hip. And the research has shown that they actually break their hip first and then they fall. And it's because of osteoporosis, you know, poor bone health, that kind of thing. But if you have a strong skeletal structure, you do resistance training, you can avoid that. And then some balance training. And uh, my father is in his 80s, and he had some accidents where he started falling a little bit. And within two months, literally eight weeks, with a little bit of training a couple of days a week, he became much stronger so that when he had double knee surgery, he recovered so quickly. His doctors were so impressed. So it can happen at, you know, at any age. It doesn't matter whether you're 30, 40, 80, 100. There are things that you can do. And rather than look at what you can't do, because I know we all have certain limitations, just focus on the things that you can. A lot of it is mindset and being positive and feeling like you can accomplish this. It's actually huge.